Hey guys, how are you guys? <laughs> Welcome once again back here to my podcast. It has been a minute since I have recorded. And if you guys are anything like me right now, um, we um, school districts are closed now for the remaining of the school year. So yes, I am at home. And yes, I now have become my um, kids teacher. And yes, I work more at home than when I do when I'm at work and not at home. I work that much more. With that being said, how are all the mommies doing out there? <laughs> are you guys going crazy yet? Um, I have been home since, oh Jesus, the last week of March. So the last week of March, I think I've been home for about two, almost three weeks, maybe two weeks, not sure. But um, the first week was fine. The first week I was um, enjoying it because I got a lot done here at the house. We gutted out our closet um, and have like bags and bags of clothes to donate. I like cleaned and sanitized the whole house. And I mean, it was fun. It was fun for the first week. And then the second week, I'm like, okay, there's only so much cleaning I can do before I start going crazy because the house is already clean and we maintain it clean. So now what, right? So then the kids activities, as you guys know, all kids, I'm not sure how it works in your guys' city, but in this, in the IE and in um, the Empire, the San Marino County, we, uh, there's no more cheer and there's no more, um, um, the Little League didn't even start here at our local city. So I have my kids and my husband home full time and um we're doing good <laughs> really guys we're doing good we have uh, my husband and i have um started some new hobbies i started making face masks uh masks for um this coronavirus that's going on i whooped, um brought out my uh sewing machine that my parents have bought me you can see part of it right here <laughs> Um, my parents had bought me a sewing machine 20 something years ago because I took home egg sewing for two months. And then my mom said, take it for second semester and you really like it, then we'll go and buy you a sewing machine. And so I still have the sewing machine, it still works. So now we, I am currently doing masks. I started with my family members now and eventually we'll move in into like selling them. My husband has been selling a lot of wood um, projects online as well. So we have income coming in, but other than that, um, it's, it's, you know, on my podcast, as you guys have heard me previously talk about not overspending, save your money, don't spend it on unnecessary things. And um, so we do have that savings on the side, just in case, you know, I tell you guys to call the FU money and just in case we need it. And um, I hope in the midst of all this, guys, you guys are learning important lessons. First of all, the first lesson you guys, what is going on right here? <laughs> the first lesson you guys should learn right away is never trust anybody to pay anything of yours. You save up your money, save a good four to six months of all your bills, necessary bills, because you just never know. All the essential workers majority, not all of them, are people that we thought were not important and they ended up being very important. And maybe we people, you know, with the good jobs and the salaries and the benefits thought we were, you know, our jobs were important and we were the first ones to say, go home. So I hope that teaches you the lesson. I hope that this, this huge, you know, pandemic that's going on right now she teaches you that a lot of stuff that we thought we needed, we really don't need. And, you know, we do have to save because I know that a lot of everybody is throwing out that word stimulus check and they're sending us money and you're going to get about $3,400 and blah, 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 blah. Um, I don't know about your guys' um, um, you know, bills and all that, but $3,400 that's very, very little. I mean, mortgages are what, like nowadays about 19 to $2,300, you know, and it's scary. It's scary to hear a lot of people 
saying that they want to depend on that. Now, I do get it that, you know, some people are truly in that we live paycheck by paycheck. A lot of us guys, a lot of guys, a lot of us, um, a majority of the people are living paycheck to paycheck because that's how they decided they wanted to live with their unnecessary spending. And, you know, I was just talking to somebody. I'm like, you know, all these people that got their tax money, you know, and everybody was bragging to me, right? Because as you guys know, my husband and I never get my, um, uh, income tax money back. Um, we're like, oh, I'm getting eight G's. I'm getting 10,000, 7,000. And I'm like, okay, that was in February, March. You guys already went through all that money. And I know somebody who spent her um, tax return on annual Disney passes. Okay, annual Disney passes for her family of four. Now, is an annual Disney pass necessary? No, not really. So what's going on now? Disneyland shut down until further notice and the way things are going, we're looking at about maybe the end of May and early June. Did you guys know that the only thing that's gonna happen is Disneyland is gonna add however many weeks they close, they're gonna add it to the end of your um, card when it expires. They want that money coming in, you know, cause a lot of people tell me they, um, do monthly payments or, you know, they coughed off that money. Don't think they're going to give you and refund you that money back. That money's already theirs. So what could have you done with that money instead of getting annual Disneyland passes? See, because if you're using anything with your tax money, because, oh, it's money and, and I have to do it for that. I mean, that's not, that's not, that's not smart thinking. That. That puts in this, which many of you guys are in right now, and posta cabron, you know, um, situations because where's all the money? And now we're waiting for the stimulus check. And that money's already spent, even though we haven't even received it. So I hope that it teaches teaches many of us that the essential things we needed are only the essential things we need. And that um, yeah, save your money. You know, who cares if you're not wearing name brand shoes and you don't have a carro, una trocota with all the works and, and the systems and your kids and the nails, the nails guys, las uñas. You know, a lot of people are complaining because the nail place is closed and I'm like, guys, a little acetone, take it off, file it down, y pintatelas, the Dollar Tree has them for a dollar, you know, um, that, you know, versus what, what's a manicure, like $25 now, um, the big long uñas que se usan about what, 75. So I hope it, it teaches us that save your money. We don't need all these luxury things we think we need to. And we need to learn how to do things on our own. Another thing that I hope that this whole chaos teaches you guys is teachers are essential. I, I you know, I have my teaching background and, you know, school um, district background, and it's still tough to sit here with both of my kids and have a, you know, we have a schedule. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I have my schedule of what to do, you know, the first 10, 60 minutes or the 40, 30. I mean, it's, it's very hard, you know, and I'm like, wow, um, go teachers. Yes, guys, I've been knowing it firsthand. Teachers are not paid enough. And I hope that a lot of you guys learn to humble yourself and maybe it goes back to how it used to be where the teachers needed to have the most utmost respect for doing what they're doing. Because I know a lot of, uh, you know, when I first started um, um, being in the teaching scene, a lot of teachers were always um, barked at. You know, they were always, oh, it's your fault. Oh, my kid, it's not my kid's fault. It's because you pick on my kid. You pick on my kid. Or, oh, the other guy, you know, and, and I used to hear a lot of that in parent conferences. And I hope now you realize it's not your, it's not your, it's not the teacher's fault. It really is your kid's fault. And not only that, maybe now you understand the lack of effort you're putting into your children's education. And if you're, at home right now, teaching your kids. I hope that that's another lesson you learn. Respect your teachers. Don't charge at your teachers. If your teachers are telling you, your kid is the problem, he needs to do this, they need to do the homework, they need to read, they need, follow what the teacher says. Help the teacher make your student the best student ever. And hey, now you guys know, 
it is essential, right? Because now you guys have to buy them paper and pencils and whatnot. Porque, I don't know, I when I used to teach, I used to hand them out because a lot of my students didn't have pencils because the parents didn't think it was their duty to buy them pencils. So just the minimal things like that. I hope, I hope that you guys learn and appreciate everything that those teachers are doing right now. Another lesson I hope you guys are learning right now is I hope you understand, and this is for the stay-at-home moms. I'm not bashing you guys. I'm not saying you guys don't work any that much harder as moms that work full-time. But I hope that you understand that the reason why it was easy for you guys to be a stay-at-home mom, and this is for the moms that stay at home and they have kids that are in from first grade all the way to 12th grade. I hope you understand that the reason why it was so easy for you to be a stay-at-home mom is because the teachers that most of the times are not acknowledged, are taking care of your kids for about six to seven hours, maybe more, okay? So I hope you guys learn to humble yourself if you're that stay-at-home mom that bashes people or moms like myself that work. And, you know, um, I hope that it teaches you guys, man, you know what? It is true. The reason why I could be a stay-at-home mom is because my kids were never home. Y ahora que los tengo en la casa, no sé qué hacer very different right so i hope you understand to humble yourself not to glorify oh i'm a stay-at-home mom it's so hard i get it when you have toddlers when you have toddlers it is a full time job that i do not want to take over anytime soon but if you're that mom that dropped them off at daycare school preschool and all that and then you could talk about oh i'm a good mom no, you also were getting help. That's why you could bloat, bloat about being a stay-at-home mom. And many of you stay-at-home moms that drop off the kids at school to chismear con cafecito, go to Zumba class, Target, and do everything you're not supposed to. Now you guys are staying home, right? Because everything's closed. And now you're like, oh, yeah, oh, stay home. Enjoy being a mom. So I hope the majority of you stay-at-home moms that have school age students understand that, again, teachers are your necessities and hey thank them so don't get mad if they're like hey who wants to volunteer and cut this for me or great don't don't get mad jump to it because they're helping you raise those kids another lesson i hope you guys are learning right now is never ever think you're above any fast food restaurant person Woo! I started working at Jack in the Box when I was 16 years old, okay? I got my license that same day, went to my interview and got my job when I was 16. Um, so I worked at Jack in the Box from the age of 16 all the way to the age of 19. So I know that it's a lot of work to work at a fast food restaurant. Not only a fast food restaurant, a drive through I was, I was thrown to drive through because my supervisor said, you're, when you graduate, you probably will still be working here, you know, because you want to go to college. I'm going to tell you right now, these, you know, we're more needed drive through Once you work drive through you're automatically going to get into your hours. So they threw me and I learned, and I learned that it's not easy because damn, these customers. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So I hope you guys learn or are are learning to understand that they are essential because they are working and we're not. And another thing that I hope you guys understand is working mommies, working mommies, I always, always appreciate them because we are busy after work. I have to run, come home, you know, um, eat something really quick and then we go to our activities. Now that I am home, I'm cooking more. I, there's no need for me to go to these fast food restaurants. So, but when I did have to, I had already learned how to appreciate them because without them, I too couldn't do anything I did after work. But now I stay home and I cook and I cook and I'm so appreciative that our local markets are still open. Yay! Because, hey, they're true heroes right now. So I hope you guys learn to appreciate that degrees went out that window as soon as this coronavirus hit. It went out. It didn't matter if you were Dr. Ed or blah, 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 right? Some of them are still working. And then the ones we really, a lot of people bashed on are the ones we actually do need. Like the campesinos who are still picking all your vegetables up. Yes, boo-boo. Yes. So I hope that's another lesson that you are learning right now. And 
You know, what, another thing I want to address is I hear and I see everybody's stories about how everybody's like, well, I'm not a teacher, you know, going back to the teachers. What am I going to teach my kid? I don't know how to do algebra. I don't know how to do that. Oh, okay. Okay. And you still have to keep your guys, your kids busy, right? Because sitting them in front of the Xbox for 12, 14 hours is not going to do any better. Do you guys know how to cook stay at home moms? Do you guys know how to clean? Do you guys know how to, okay. So now maybe we teach our kids that. Now that we have time, let's teach them how to make some huevitos estrellados para que no se mueran de hambre. Let's teach them how to coser los frijoles. Let's teach them how to wash the dishes the proper way. You know, my, my husband made these garden boxes and I'll put a picture around here somewhere. So my kids are growing their own vegetables. So they, they already planted the seeds and everything and I want them to take pictures. And when they take pictures, in the end, they're gonna keep a log, a journal, and when everything's done of them growing and picking out their vegetables, we're gonna have a presentation. Yes, we are. And then they're gonna learn, well, why do these grow like this? And why did the carrot grow like that? Because that's, hey, everything is a moment of teaching. If you're a man and you're home, Teach your kid how to change that tire, change the oil, the minute, how to check the oil, right? Hey, you know, every time you're about to go on a long trip, I need you to check your oil to make sure there's enough. You know, I know how to sew, not that great, but hey, maybe I'll start teaching my little one because I didn't learn until I was in high school. There's many things you can teach your kids. It's not just math and science and um, reading, you know? It's a lot of things. If you guys are great readers, read a book to your kids and help them to understand the context of a book. You know, hey, just don't fast forward and read. What are you reading about? Let's question the characters. Why are we doing this? Why are we not? If you don't want to read, look for all the educational movies and biographies that are out there. And they can learn about a person. And while they're learning about the person, hey, write me a one page summary of what the what you learn from the movie or the character or, or the, you know, the, um, the battles and you know all that good stuff hey teaching about other people's religion not to teach them about their religion but to be tolerant to other people's beliefs and you know there's so much to teach your kids so to hear a lot of you guys complain on your stories about i'm not a teacher what am i what do i know or the kids are driving me crazy i'm all day with my kids first of all those are your kids imagine how the teacher feel it's not even their kids and they don't have one or two or even even four they have 33 plus children. I love my kids' teachers. I love them. I donate to them all the time. Anything they need or bring, my kids will bring out back a page. Mom, we need this. Oh, here's double, 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 right? Because, hey, they're helping me go to work. And by me helping, go, you know, go to work, I can come home and have a paycheck to work. My students, my students, my kids can do extra activities. So, there's a lot of a lot of lessons we can learn here. I I think I saw a meme something about um, you know, pick up a pick up something to do, learn something, you know, do some knowledge. If you guys if your house is still dirty and you guys have been home for now about two to three weeks, hey, it's not that you didn't have time. Now you're just you're a cochina. So start analyzing why don't I like cleaning? You know, I I sentada what's going on. I mean, this virus. I hope, like I said, is teaching everybody that you never know what life is going to bring to you. You know, it's, it's like I hear a lot of people say, you know, oh, when people die unexpectedly, you know, oh, if I would have known, I would have hugged a little, you know, pero ya está hecho. Coronavirus is a little bit different. If I would have known, well, now you do know. So stop the spending, stay home, dig yourself out of debt um, by staying home now. You know, you don't have to spend on gas. You don't have to spend on makeup and your morning coffee. And, you know, you can make breakfast at home for like a buck 25. So there are a lot of things that coronavirus is doing. I know that the worst part of the spectrum is that people are dying when we were told to stay home. San Bernardino County only had zero, zero. Uh, um, cases and today today is I don't even know guys it's Friday April 3rd I'm not sure we have um, over 300 cases so you see just like that it just like that guys and you know the worst is yet to come so if anything I hope you guys learn to appreciate um, everybody I hope you guys know that we will some come this uh, we will over overcome this and not only that I really hope you guys spend this time reflecting on yourself 
and things you could do better for 2021. I jokingly always tell my husband, we all jinxed it because we all said that we were going to be um, this year. 2020 was going to be our year. So all of us jinxed it. And this is why this is going on. And like I said, I just hope you guys learn to appreciate everybody else. If you guys are not staying home, stay home. There is no need for you guys to be out and about. Um, I don't visit my parents anymore. I do call them via messenger. I'll go on my on my um, computer, my my desktop computer, and I call them. I call my little my twin sister to say hi of the baby, you know, because of my mom's lupus situation. I too have lupus, as, as you guys know. So yes, I take this very serious. I do social distancing. You know, if I have to go somewhere, I will give you a dirty look if you're standing next to me too close because it's just the way it is and you know as of today we are now they're asking us to please just wear that face mask for extra extra precaution not to prevent it because of course we know that our the masks we're doing at home are not that they're they're more for us to um it's a, a caution you know it's telling people hey i'm taking this seriously stay back so i do i do like that but yeah so that's that's those are all my thoughts or lessons I hope you guys are learning about um, coronavirus or coronavirus is teaching us. Like I said, I just thought I'd come up here and let you guys know where I am doing okay. Um, we're keeping super busy. I have a full room dedicated to my crafts. As you guys can see, I have paint, I have glitter, I have ribbon, I have tissue paper, I have, I mean, I'm looking around, I have spray paint, so my kids cannot go bored here. So, like I said, if you're an artist, let them, you know, do art, do puzzles. Puzzles are in right now. We tried to buy some at, at Walmart and they were sold out. Went on Amazon, they're asking too much money because, you know, everybody knows they're doing you know puzzles puzzles are good for your brain guys but you know as a as a person in education i do ask you guys to um do all you can to keep those kids you know active their main you know their brains active don't allow them to stay up to 14 hours on the xbox or on their phones you know tiktok is taking over guys to me, that's being creative to know how to stop the video and edit the video and then post it. We had, I mean, let them do that for a couple hours. That's not bad. You know, tolerable videos too. Don't let them go wild. But there's so much we could do right now. And especially now that the end of the school year is done. Our school year ends May 26, I believe. So, um, and then they will be technically on summer break so it's like they got an extra two months of ex of a summer break so i really hope that you guys just stay you know committed to you know a couple more weeks where we're there in may you know may or maybe in june and um keep them active you know you guys can still go to your backyard throw the ball around um teach them a thing or two you know teach them a thing or two so yeah that that was my purpose of today's podcast guide to to make sure you guys are learning those lessons and to start thinking about you know what's going on out there in the, in the world and to be safe stay home be kind you know if you're still being an a-hole during these times i don't know if there's any hope for you guys um and and stay connected you know check up on people and um if you could think of a hobby you would like hey learn it you have all the time in the world now. And if you are those essential workers that are out there and have to be out there, you know, the nurses, the doctors, you know, the people that clean the rooms, um, you know, much props to you guys. My prayers are always out there for you guys every night. You know, grocery store people. I have a friend who works at a grocery store. Pray for her all the time. Police officers. We have a very, very close friend whose um, husband is... Um, a police officer and so we always think about them you know we just had our second death here in um, Riverside Police Department so it's it's scary out there guys but I hope that in the midst of everything all those deaths and all those cases don't go into you know don't go to vain or uh, die in vain and are in vain and I hope that you guys just you know you know analyze things and, and learn to acknowledge that hey you know what you know, I learned my lesson now. Yeah, I got a kickback and that's, I really didn't need all that that I bought. You know, La Troca could have been without the system. You know, my nails could have been without the gems. Um, and, and save up guys, love each other. Think, what, you know, wisely how you're gonna spend your money. Um, and you know, always, always be thankful for your teachers and all those essential workers. I hope those are the lessons that we're learning. Are learning. So 
without further ado, guys, I am going to let you guys go. Thank you for, you know, hopping on here and listening to what I have to say. Comment down below if you have any other thoughts. And I will see you in our next podcast. Bye, guys.